So resharpen after every use. Okay. Are they going to be dishwasher safe? Okay. So they're not dishwasher safe. I'll abbreviate dishwasher safe all day today. D W S. Dishwasher safe. Okay. They're not dishwasher safe, and of course there is no guarantee. Now, these are going to be found in places like Walmart's. And when I say Walmart's, I mean all the superstores, Target, Kmart, what have you. Walmart's, any grocery stores, and any TV brands. So anything that you see on TV is going to be your cheapo knives. Now you guys are very familiar with cheapo knives. You've seen these. The majority of you guys actually brought these as your jump knives today. So this is definitely not something that's new to you. Probably one of the reasons why you brought it as your jump knife, and so many people did is they're the crappiest knives that there are. So you can probably identify that uh, you know that that may have been a good thing for you guys to bring. Okay, so we've got some different versions, right? Now, as you look up here at these different jump knives, as you look up here at this stuff, you probably notice, look, they maybe they all have a different name, maybe they're called different things, but on face value, these are all the same exact knife. They all have plastic handles, right? No rivets, partial tang, otherwise they'd show it to you. Stainless steel, which we know has to be resharpened after every use. They're not dishwasher safe and there's no guarantee. Every single one of these, although they're shaped differently and they say different things, they're the exact same piece. You guys follow with me on this? They're the exact same knife, doesn't matter. It's the same piece. And these are the absolute bottom of the barrel. Now, if you remember today, I told you that one of my biggest objectives about today was building not false confidence, but genuine confidence in yourself. We already know Cutco's good, right? So it's about building confidence in you and your ability and your uh, understanding that you know this material. Fact of the matter is, I don't think I had to put this up here. If I had held this up, you guys probably could have identified this, right? I mean, you could have told me that was a plastic handle. You could have told me there's no rivets in this or that there's no, you know, that it's stainless steel. It has to be resharpened after every use. The fact of the matter is, you probably didn't learn anything new just now. But now at least you know when you see something like this, this is what it's categorized as. These are the places that it comes from. You understand? I want to talk to you guys for a second about Walmart. Because look, I'm not saying Walmart's a bad place. You shop at Walmart, I shop at Walmart. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But Walmart, what do they specialize in? Anybody know? Okay, low price is cheap, call it that. I think they specialize in nothing. You would never go to Walmart to get the best of the best. They don't have any specialties, okay? They specialize in nothing. Walmart is a superstore. It is a place where you can go and they're going to have everything under the sun that you need. You've got stuff for the bathroom, they've got perfume, they've got shoes and socks and outdoor and kitchen and hunting and sporting and fishing and toys and you name it, they've got it. It's a superstore and it's a place where anybody can go, have a rich or poor, and no matter what, they can afford something from Walmart and what they need. So you can't assume that I'm going to go to Walmart and get the best of the best knives. Just like if you're a golfer, you're probably not going to buy your golf clubs from Walmart, but they do have golf clubs at Walmart that you can buy. Okay? So let's just X Walmart out of there as far as places where you're going to get good knives. Grocery stores specialize in groceries, not knives. Their kitchen section is like the size of this desk. You can't assume you're going to get great kitchenware from the grocery store. If you want food, great place to go. Probably not a good place to get knives, okay? And this is what you will find at the grocery store. The cheapos, the bottom of the barrel stuff. Let's talk about TV brands for a second. This is a TV brand. You guys have heard of this, Miracle Blade. You see the infomercials and the stuff like that on TV, okay? It talks about, on the one hand, this guy will slice through a hammer and then, you know, a second later he'll slice through a tomato and, you know, five easy payments in $19.99 or whatever it is. I mean, look, you're looking right at it. Here it is. It's not on TV. It's in front of your face. Plastic handle, stainless steel, serrated edge knife, can never be resharpened. We can put this up to the test every single day of the week. It's junk. It's sold on TV for a reason. Superman flies in the movies. There's not a man really flying around saving people's lives. On TV, they may cut through a hammer. Knives don't really cut through hammers. It's designed to sell for you. You'll even notice 
and this is the biggest part, that on there, on that name it says Miracle Blade 3. Okay? Miracle Blade 3. Well, the way that these companies work is this. Miracle Blade, as like a parent company, okay, they talk about on TV how this has a lifetime guarantee. Okay? That's like their big selling point. Lifetime guarantee. What they don't tell you is that it's only for the lifetime of the company. And so what they do is every year they'll run an infomercial for a year, and then they'll start a new one the next year. So one year they'll do Miracle Blade, then the next year they'll do Miracle Blade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, 5, all the way on. And they've been doing it for you know 20 or 30 years this way. Well, what they do is Miracle Blade 3 will run for a year, and then they'll close that company down. Put out the exact same product the next year, except they'll put a 4 next to it. So if you've got Miracle Blade 3 and you call in, that company no longer exists. It's done. And that's how they get you. You guys think this is good for consumers? No. And, uh, and so I love when we see customers with TV brands and stuff like that. Because look, if they're going to fall for the gimmicks on TV, I'm pretty sure they're going to like when we do our demonstrations. Okay? If they're already buying into all that, trust me, they're going to buy some Cutco. So I'll tell you, as far as your bottom of the barrel, as far as the set price goes, and this is real key, a set of your cheapest of the cheap is going to run you about two to three hundred bucks. One of the reasons why our price point, by the way, one of the reasons why a typical average order for our company may be two or three hundred bucks is because this is this is a really bottom of the barrel type price. Now, I'll tell you, folks, I assume you guys probably don't know the prices of knives. That's why you're in training. Just like if I was talking to your parents, I would not assume that they'd know the price of an iPod or a PlayStation 3. If they wanted to sell iPods, they'd have to go to iPod training. And if you guys want to sell knives, you've got to go to knife training, right? I don't expect for you guys to know the price of knives. Because those lists that you brought with you to training with like your potential customers or whatever, you didn't make it. You're not our customers. I'm not trying to sell to you. I don't expect for you to know what the price is. That's what training's for. And I'm telling you, the absolute bottom of the barrel, cheapest of the cheap, is going to be about two to three hundred bucks. Now, when you think about other things for the kitchen that are necessities, can we all agree that a knife is a necessity? You've got to have it, right? Can't live without it. There are no homes that don't have knives. When you think about other things for the kitchen that are necessities, dishwasher, fridge, stuff like that that you need, think about the price of some of those things. Your cheapest of the cheap fridge from a Best Buy or Circuit City, their bottom of the barrel prices are going to be right around $800 to $1,000 for the cheapest fridge. So when we're talking about two to 300 bucks for a set of knives, just as an essential, as a fridge, this really, we're not talking about a lot of money. Does that make sense to you guys? I mean, your bottom of the barrel dish or like washer and dryer, like the cheapest of the cheap, is probably going to be for the set, six, seven, eight hundred bucks for the cheapest of the cheap. So for a third of that to be for a set of knives, that's that's very realistic. And that's why Walmart sells them for this much, because they know everybody can afford those prices. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, everybody follow with me? Any questions on your cheapo knives? Okay? Well then the next section that we'll get into then is uh, is going to be your mid-range knives. Your mid-range knives. And as far as your mid-range knives go, Now, we'll actually move into uh, a name brand. The most popular brand of mid-range knives is a company called Chicago Cutlery. You may have heard of it. You may not. That's fine. Chicago Cutlery. It's popular. It's out there. You see it quite a bit. Let me... Uh... Okay. I've got a Chicago Cutlery knife right here. So... This is Chicago Cutlery, all right? Now, earlier, again, I'm going to keep going back to this point because it's so crucial to today. But I talked about earlier, today's all about building your confidence, genuinely, right? So it's real simple. You guys tell me, what kind of handle is this? What kind of rivets are these? Okay, you got metal here, metal on the back. Is it full tank or partial tank? Okay, full tank. What kind of steel is this? How often does that have to be resharpened? Is this dishwasher safe? Just come with the game.